Hey everyone, Yan Zhao, Long Harbor. The long and storied history of Long Harbor. Originally, the creator and artist Alejandro Mirabal, he put this on Indiegogo in 2019. It had him living in Bali. Something happened. He had some personal or some family issues, I'm not sure. He ended up in Cuba for a while. I don't know. He has a Spanish accent. Maybe he's from Cuba. It's really hard to say. But two years later, Long Harbor comes out. And I got to say, I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. Um, we will get into exactly what I have a problem with in a little bit. Uh, but let's start off with the fantastic stuff. I mean, just the book itself. Jeez, look at this. I mean, the art is fantastic. Uh, by writers Nasho Toby. I don't know who Nasho Toby is. The art by Alejandro Mirabal. Logo by Dave Shear. And printing consulting Rob Smith and Joseph Healy. I don't know them either. But let's get into the book itself. All right. So. It's essentially a Lovecraftian story set in a place called Long Harbor, where a lot of strange things have happened over the years. A lot of people have died. Right now they're having sort of a great fish die off where there's all sorts of marine animals on the beaches. So we have Mike, and this is Mike. He is a marine biologist and he's heading over there. So we have our whole cast and crew here we have ted who is a preacher and mechanic victor is a diver and marine biologist tony is a medic and a cook and marcus is also a marine biologist and then they have a new di diver bob and they also have his daughter who will show up at some point so then ah Here's his daughter. He has to bring his daughter on because uh, something happened to the wife and he needs to take her with him. Nowhere else for her to go. So this is, it starts off with this reporter. She is asking Mike about what the heck happened on this expedition. They go there and all of a sudden weird things happen. You know, hands coming out of a dead shark biting you. They find this lady living in a cabin. She's got these real freaky markers with weird looking crosses on there. And that's when things start going south. So she destroys the radio, can't call for help. She says, no, 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 there's voices that are calling for help that are not real. And so they start to say, well, we got to figure out what's going on. We find out he has a secret past, he may be an exorcist, or he's fighting some evil things, we don't know. He would be the equivalent of a guy who is tracking the cult of Cthulhu. And so, we find that things are, something is there, we don't know exactly what it is, but it's starting to get on the ship, and one by one, people are in trouble. Uh, I gotta say, the story itself is great. The characters all have their own voice. You know, the story makes sense why people would do the things that they do. We have motivation. He, Mike, ends up getting a lot of people killed basically to save his daughter, which hmm, doesn't really go that well. Uh, and just to say, of course, Mike is back, back in the world after this. He's rescued. He says, you know, he wants to go back and this lady is going to take him. So as you can see, you know, I like to complain about color. Man, color is spot on, the right textures. It's hard to believe one guy did all of this. Uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. I know he's getting picked up for a lot of work. Doug Ernst has him working on 
a little something something for for the next Soul Finder book. Now, the question is, would I buy a sequel? I don't know. And the problem I have is this. Um, I don't like the way a lot of us backers were treated. So what happened was it took two years, which wasn't the problem, but eventually Alejandro signed on with Iconic Comics to distribute Long Harbor. And so we this started coming out April, May, and what happened is some people started getting their books, but a lot of us didn't. I only got this book about the middle of October. And so we're writing, asking, you know, what's going on? Nobody's responding on the Indiegogo page, right into Iconic Comics, Radio Silence. I contacted Alejandro himself. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah I'll look into it. Followed up with him a couple weeks later. He's like, oh, I don't know. I got a contact with them. And then Radio Silence. You know, as someone who fronted you money when you were trying to break into the industry, when you tried to make your first book, make your bones, uh, you just don't treat people that way. This is very much the Breitweiser situation with the Red Rooster campaign all over again, except at least with Red Rooster, I can understand why the Breitweisers would take a chance and say, okay, we got we to gotta jump at this Walmart deal. This, on the other hand, Iconic was selling this book on their website and delivering it to people who bought it through Iconic before people got it from Indiegogo. I think I saw an email just last week, um, the first week in November, saying, oh, just now we're going to start delivering internationally. Now, I know things are weird with supply chains and whatnot, but that's just not right. You don't dump the people who stuck with you for two years, who weren't asking for refunds, who just wanted their book. You don't screw them over and allow a company like Iconic to do that. You know, I don't have a deal with Iconic. I had a deal with Alejandro to get the book. And you know, you got to have your eye on the prize. And never does he acknowledge it. Never does he apologize. And it's just like, what's the matter with you? You know, I don't know if it's a, a different culture thing and he's worried about losing face or what, but would I buy another book from him? I don't know. I'm certainly not going to support another Indiegogo campaign. The Brightweisers, you know, I buy their stuff at Walmart now. I certainly won't. I didn't back the Saints. I will not back Long Harbor 2 if it's Indiegogo. Will I buy it through Iconic? That's hard to say. Iconic has fulfilled Doug Ernst's book, his second Soul Finder. I bought a number of Common America and Black Hops from Tim Lim and Mark Pellegrini through Iconic, and they've all come in fine. So I don't know what it was about this, but it wasn't done well, and I don't like the fact that they didn't acknowledge it. So fantastic product, excellent writing, top-tier writing, you know, better than what you see from Marvel and DC. Top-tier art, you know, he, very stylistic. Could be, in the future, Alejandro is bigger than Mike Mignola, but... The whole this whole movement was started in how you treat the fans and well I don't like it so what do you think what do you guys think of Long Harbor what, yay nay leave a comment down below give this video a thumbs up if you would please subscribe to the channel we'll definitely have more comic book reviews coming